Hello, and welcome to the show. I am back on a Beam NG Drive, taking three more vehicles down the West Coast Rally stage. Uh, don't mind the uh, visual effects, while there is a sort of snowy, Christmassy mod uh, thing out for this game, you'll see uh, various decorations around the place. There is the visual effect of snow, but it isn't affecting the handling of the cars, so it's not going to invalidate any of these vehicles' runs. We're starting off today with the uh, classic position rally car. Now last time out, while we had some all-wheel drive vehicles, we didn't have a purpose-built rally car. Of course, this is going to very much like the opening section of the course. Might struggle a little bit more further down once we get onto the tarmac stuff, not having slick tyres, which some of the race cars do, but hopefully you can make up a fair chunk of time early on. We've also, of course, got some names for the corners around here that uh, I shall... Well, uh, <laughs> we will say when we get to them. This hairpin is going to uh, be called Chiliad with its resemblance to uh, some of the downhill chaos from a GTA 5. Got a mound of doom on the outside there. We saw a number of cars roll. Been a while since we've had a mound of doom to worry about. But uh, there we go. And then we are in the wrong gear all the way through here. I guess we be a little bit more aggressive with this car. As we leave, the car park is going to... Well, this, this turn here is going to be called Macau after the massive crash that saw all of the uh, GT cars uh, make a car park around the streets of uh, that circuit. Let's try and not... Oh, we've got a lot more understeer through there than I thought we did. And we buggered the steering up. Okay. We are good. We've got plenty of grip on the dirt sections. When we get to the tarmac, funnily enough, that's when we have issues. The corner we're coming up to here with the junction is going to be called NASCAR. It is a very, very long left-hander with a concrete wall for us to plough into, which we are about to go and do, because I can't oops, stop the car. Oh, we've lost a tyre. There's also a, a, a brilliant corner for stealing tyres. That does a lot of damage to tyres. Yeah, got to be a little bit, little bit earlier on the brakes through there. We need to really turn in a little bit sooner. There we go. Now we can put the power down. Whoa, make the most of the run out of there. We're not going to stop. Ooh. That's a big one. The crash barrier saved us from a very big crash. <laughs> well, it was a very big crash. It would have been a lot bigger had that barrier not stopped us going over the edge. Ah, that's kind of the line that I want. I just don't want... I think I put a rear wheel on the dirt as we were under very heavy acceleration. And you can't really get away with that. Amazingly, I mean, mechanically speaking, the car is... Not not good, but it does still drive. <laughs> it's yeah, the, the rally cars are tough old tough old brutes. It's gonna be quite stop start around some of these longer corners, but it's gonna work, I think, overall. Oh, we're not gonna stop for that. We're not gonna stop for that. <laughs> Done the same thing again. We've not got the grip. Uh, it was. If I try and turn in, we were going to have exactly the same crash that we did last time, just run along the wall. So I figured if I don't steer, maybe we could get it to slow down a bit faster, but that's not going to work. <laughs> Either. Oopsie. Oopsie indeed. Oh, it kind of bobbles under brakes on the way into NASCAR. But we've actually got quite a nice line through there. A little bit of understeer as we get on the power. Oh, big bump on the exit. We've kept it together though. <laughs> Keep the foot down. Up towards the final corner. We've not kept it together there. Oh. Ow. <laughs> Ow. The rear left is broken. The rear left is very poorly from that. Well... We'll go and cross the finish. Limp little Bazima. That big two-wheeled moment cost us massively. <laughs> that might be Mound of Doom Mark II, I think, over there. Because, yeah, it just put me out too wide. And in my attempts to try and keep up speed, I was just in the wrong place to get on the brakes for that final corner. Ooh. There are some, there are some nasty crashes on this stage. Well, so far, as you can imagine, the Bazima has been really rather good on the dirt. Through this first section, it is fantastic. You can chuck the car about, and you can get away with doing things. Well, you get away with throwing this car around in ways that uh, the high-powered rear-wheel drive cars, even the low-powered rear-wheel drive cars, just can't. It's got the traction. It's got the grip. Uh, it looks quite impressive. Oh, might have changed up slightly too soon there, but we will still get decent acceleration out of that corner. Then we go back to doing sensible driving. We kind of throw it around on the dirt because we can, and through some of the tight stuff, I think we can make a little bit of time, but around here we can't throw it about. We've just got to be as neat and tidy as we can. Use that acceleration once more down towards the hairpin. This time, not had the big lock up into that corner. And, oh, accelerate out the other side. A little bit of oversteer from the car. Nothing too terrible, though. And try and slow it down without locking all of the brakes is the tough part. And uh, once we have got it slowed, 
get on the power. I think we can get on the power a little bit earlier through there. Watch the bumps under braking. Didn't realise how much of a problem they were going to be for some vehicles. Now, while I want to get on the power as soon as I can, we can't afford to run across Mound of Doom Mark II on the outside there, because that really will mess up your car. I'm going to take a slightly different approach to this final corner, see if this does the trick. Yep, that'll work. That'll work through there, and it is across the line for the Pazima. <laughs> Yeah, good fun through that opening section. Very good fun through the opening dirt section, as you can imagine, for the rally car. Gets a little bit sketchy in a couple of uh, places later on. Those Mound of Dooms, if you hit them hard enough, they can seriously mess up some cars. I've got to be very, very wary of those. However, yeah, when things go right with this car, it is pretty good to drive. I will be very interested to see how that will have done in terms of its uh, stage time. Up next, we have the Moonhawk Elite Custom. This, a very high-powered version, a very fast version of the Moonhawk, but it's not a race car. It's not a drag car, kind of just a normal road-going spec. So, not going to have a huge amount of grip on the tarmac. We're really not going to have a huge amount of grip on the dirt. And we're going to have massive amounts of power. This might not go so well, but we will have to... Uh, <laughs> have to wait and see. The front end is not likely to want to get turned in to these uh, corners. Chiliad, please please turn the front of the car through here. Oh, we're going to be really playing that one. Risky. Oh, we might get away with not hitting the Mound of Doom in such a bad way in this car, because it'll be very, very sideways through that uh, through that section. Oh, going to have to grab the handbrake here as well. This is a big old boat of a car to make it through the dirt, but we have done that. Now we can get onto the tarmac, up towards Mikhail we go, if we can not make that corner. Oh, <laughs> there's no grip. There is absolutely no grip at all in this car. So much power to try and use when we get to an acceleration zone, but very, very difficult to uh, use said power. Can we use it out of here? Maybe. Oh, no. Catch it. Catch it. There we are. Oh, we might not make the corner, though. Going to be panic and grab handbrake. Somehow we have made it around the corner. I'm not sure this is being very conducive to a good s run. Oh, it's just... I'm pretty sure it's spun its wheels the entire way here. Uh, oh, oh, we nearly ploughed into some rocks there. Oh, we clonked the wall on the way out. There we go. Just about making it work in... <laughs> It's a lunatic car, this one. It really is. There is quite as quite the lack of grip that I necessarily expected from it. It's going very sideways everywhere, but it is actually making it around the corners. We've almost made it up towards the final. No, that's way too deep. I think we're not going to make that corner. No, we're not going to make that corner. <laughs> almost made it all the way. Almost made it. It wasn't going to be a very good time, regardless, because it spent far too long sideways through those uh, tarmac hairpins and just pushed. Push too much, ask too much into that final corner. Turn, please turn, please turn, please turn. Bump. Uh, ooh, I was going to say we're okay. It's uh, <laughs> The bump gave us a slight bit of oversteer, but never mind. Slightly tweak the rear bumper. We can, we can work with that. Now, how much speed dare we get through here? Can we get on the power out the other side? Well, we can, but I think we're going to lose that. Oh, we're going to get... Yep, we're going to lose that. Uh, <laughs> oh, I could save it to carry on. <laughs> Okay, little bit too much, little bit too much, almost, I mean, it was only a fraction away from being okay through that section, it's worth a try. Those rocks are also going to claim a number of vehicles, I suspect. Now, not quite as brave on the throttle, there we go, Mound of Doom Mark II, we have avoided, big acceleration up towards the final corner, oh, not the front brake, will we have slowed that down enough? Uh, no, no, we won't, we won't. Oh, and I tried to throw it sideways at the line, it's not going to work. <laughs> oh. Thought we'd done that final corner really well. <laughs> I thought we'd got it right that time, and we did not. It was it was great on the way in, and it was great sort of halfway through the corner, but on the exit, I just, it wasn't quite working, and at that stage, it's nothing you can do. Nothing, nothing you can do. I hoped maybe getting it sideways might have saved it, but that wasn't going to work either, so... <laughs> We're on the motorway upside down. Well, as far as uh, spectacular crashes go with the Moonhawk, aside from probably the finish line, we're not actually that likely to see too crazier, well, unless like very bizarre happens, 
primarily because there is so little grip in this car that you just can't go quick. There is, it's just slipping and sliding and can't use any of its ferocious power here. So you're just not going fast in some ways. It's fairly straightforward to drive through the dirt section with this because you're just going about 10 miles an hour and limping your way through there. Uh, <laughs> it's, there is... Yeah, very, very little in the way of uh, danger. Got to be mindful, of course, with the throttle. Uh, it's not really full throttle very often around this course, because in second gear it still likes to spin a lot, and we don't really want that much, or we don't want oversteer if we can help it here. Try and be smooth. That was very, very close. That was incredibly close to clunking the crash barrier with the front of the car. I don't think we've had a car smack that crash barrier particularly, but we are getting through these hairpins relatively nicely. I kind of got the knack of these hairpins with this car, where we're braking with the Moonhawk to slow it down and where we can jump on the throttle and we are cleanly out of there. Just two more fast corners to go. That car has been causing us some grief. Oh, it's the bumps, I think, that do it on the way in. It's really horrible on the bumps. Now, we're going to hit the Mount of Doom Mark II. No, we're just going to end up avoiding it, which is good. Now we can use all of that Moonhawk power. Earlier on the brakes, let the car slow down. We've got to roll through the final part of the corner. Fly towards the line. That'll be it for the Moonhawk. Oh! <laughs> Uh, that'll be it for the front end. Not actually done any significant damage aside from bodywork in that, uh, well, I say significant damage. A little bit of steering damage, suspension damage perhaps. Radiator's fine from that crash. <sighs> we did it. We did it. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be a massively quick time. It's spectacular and it's very happy to be sideways everywhere. Um, a, lot of, a lot of power, so much power it's quite useless in a lot of places around a very, very technical course. Uh, but when it was acceleration zones, I'd like to think it was going fairly quick, although not really sure I had the traction to fully, fully utilise that power. Either way, we made it down. We did, we did make it down and across the finish line. The final vehicle to go today is the Abolide Class A, a heavily modified racing spec of the Abolide, likely to be brutally fast on the tarmac. What on earth is it going to make of the dirt? Now, interestingly, it doesn't have slick tyres on this car, but it does have a huge amount of grip. I'm not quite sure where that grip comes from with this mod, but we're going to quickly find out and hopefully not have a big crash. In fact, actually, it's got fairly decent grip around on this uh, on this tarmac. Well, to an extent, it gets very, very twitchy if you aren't careful on the oh, on the tarmac. The back ends are very nearly got away from me there. Easy does it around the hairpins. Yeah, there is some decent grip if you can potentially, or I say potentially, possibly, utilise it. Oh, it's going to bobble around and we can, no, we're definitely going to spin the wheels through second. We're probably going to be able, ooh, we're going to be able to carry a lot of speed through there if I get it right. Not if we end up doing that. It's not what we want to do. I was going to be kind of careful with the front end of this car. It's very low to the ground. I feel like it could, uh, Quite easily get buckled and, and cause issues around this sort of a course. It's a bit bouncy around here. I don't know what it's going to make of the kind of run up to Nazgar. I'm going to lose the back end again. Almost exactly the same crash. Oh, that was. The crash wasn't quite the same because we, we clipped the inside. It actually bent the bodywork underneath the front of the car that lifted it up halfway around the corner, and that's when we ended up going straight into the rocks. Yeah, we, we can't get away. Well, we have with some of the cars kind of brushing the occasional bit of scenery. You do that with this, and the fear that I said on the first run became very, very true. We will get on the power nicely on the X. Oh, possibly. We're going to lose that back end if we are not careful. We can get it in. Well, we've got the grip to get it into NASCAR, but we're still fighting the back of it. That was always going <laughs> to... It was always going to end up off the track at some point there. I want more rear end grip. I really desperately want more rear end grip because there is not enough of it. It's so, <laughs> so fiddly. Up towards NASCAR we go. We can definitely be later on the brakes through there. Uh, oh, although I got the turning point all wrong. We can be later on the brakes through there, but, but we need to turn in a little bit sooner. That's a new angle to have a rear wheel on a car at. The bumps throw it around a little bit, but we are neater, although clipping that dirt on the inside won't help matters. Trying to fight the car now. We've lost it. I lost the fight. The, car <laughs> the car's urge to crash was greater than its urge to stay on the road at that point. Yeah, the bumps through NASCAR are causing this sort of vehicle some issues. 
no turbos means we shouldn't have any turbo lag for the car to deal with. Uh, although, uh, we've buggered up NASCAR, haven't we? Yep, we're going to go do a grind along the wall and... <laughs> well, that's a parking job if ever I saw one. <laughs> ah... We will eventually, at some point, we will get this car through the course. It's not easy to drive, but not in the ways that I expected it. I really thought this was going to have a lot more grip through the tarmac stuff. And it just it just doesn't. It's not so bad through the dirt. I think perhaps the tightness, the tightness of the corners, because they are such a technical section, uh, I'm not trying to carry as much oh, I don't mean, so I'm not trying to I can't physically carry as much speed whereas places like here I can carry a lot of speed through this corner but in doing so you've got to really watch out because the back end does not like all of that speed most of the time uh, easy does it really make sure you got to have the car almost perfectly in a straight line before you try and open the taps up on it because otherwise you just get wheel spin and twitchy oversteer Oh, I think I got away with brushing the uh, inside against the dirt without having it buckle underneath the car and without spinning the car. Right, out of NASCAR we go. I just can't put the power down because I can't get the car quite pointing in a straight line and avoiding all of the bumps. The final corner, I daren't throw it in too fast there. Now, uh, launch it across the line. We might have lost the wheel as we came across the line, but it was across the line. <laughs> I mean, yeah. We, we skewered the car on the, on the finish gate, but it did fire its way across the line. <laughs> oh, this thing is terrifying to drive. This thing is utterly, utterly terrifying. It, uh... Oh, the clutch is unhappy. Uh, press off, I, I think there's a lot more issues with this car than a high clutch temperature, quite frankly. The bodywork is all askew. I don't know if I pull this part of the bodywork free. Uh, I don't even know whether I can pull it. I think that might have just been all stuck inside. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> oh, we lost a wing wheel. If we can pull this free, yeah, the wheel will touch the floor, which will make life easier for this car in terms of its uh, drivability. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, there is a lot of speed. There is a huge amount of speed in this car. On a much more wide open circuit, it would probably be very, very fast. Down our twisty, narrow, winding rally stage, however, it is savage. It wants to spin quite a lot, and there isn't enough rear grip. I just think we're perhaps not going fast enough to generate enough downforce to uh, get it around some of these corners. But there we go. On a two hour leaderboard, and despite the difficulties in driving it, the Class A Bolide will go to the top of the table with a 1 minute 10 down this course. It is 12 and a half seconds faster than the closest competitor. Said competitor would be that a classic Pazima rally car, 122.5. We'll put it ahead of the sports sunburst. I think, well, the rally car was very good fun through that dirt section. It, didn't have anywhere near enough grip through the tarmac stuff, so perhaps not so surprising that it is that far down. The uh, the Moonhawk, the Elite Custom version, is going to go to last place. So 134.1, it is almost a second slower than the Hopper. <laughs> it's called that, that uh, as an off-road version of the Hopper as well. It just can't get any grip. It just wastes all of its time spinning the wheels and there is... Yeah, no chance for the Moonhawk to uh, use its immense amount of power. That, though, is going to be it for this episode. If you have name suggestions for some of the yet-to-be-named corners, please do leave them in the comments section, and you may well see uh, the uh, the best ones of those appear in uh, coming episodes. I shall, of course, also link all the mods used in the description so you can download them, have a go with them yourself. But uh, thank you very much for watching, and until next time... Uh, goodbye.